Did you know I'm Mr. Beat? Anyway, I'm in a city, AKA an urban area. And now I'm in the country, AKA in a rural area. Even if you live in a small town, if that small town is nowhere near a big city, most experts say you live in a rural area. In the United States and throughout much of the world, people live in either urban areas or suburban areas. Oh yeah, now I'm in the suburbs. There's no good definition of the suburbs. It's basically where a lot of people live on the edges of urban areas, where rural areas meet urban areas. Suburbs tend to be more residential, and suburban residents usually have to travel to the city for work and play. However, these days, most suburbs feel more and more like just another part of the city, and it often makes more sense to lump them in with whatever urban area they're close to. Urban areas and suburban areas make up what's known as metropolitan areas. In the United States, if you don't live in a metropolitan area of at least 50,000 people, you live in a rural area, at least according to the Office of Management and Budget. Today, nearly 83% of Americans live in either an urban or suburban area. According to my calculations, that means only around 17% live in rural areas. Anyway, I've noticed a pretty stark trend in American politics. If you live in a big city, you probably lean to the left politically and vote for Democratic Party candidates. And if you live in the country or live in a small town far from big cities, then you probably lean to the right politically and vote for Republican Party candidates. And this trend has only become even more stark in recent years. I mean, look at this map of the United States. It shows the results of the 2020 presidential election by county. Red represents counties where the majority voted for the Republican candidate, Donald Trump, and blue represents counties where the majority voted for the Democratic candidate, Joe Biden. At first glance, you sure see a bunch of red, don't ya? Couldn't we assume that Trump easily won the election and Republicans dominate the country based on all that red? Well, no. You see, the vast majority of those red counties are rural counties. In other words, those counties are more likely to look like this instead of this. The blue counties are mostly urban. I'm in Kansas City, by the way, and I remember back in 2020, driving around the city and seeing a bunch of Joe Biden for president signs here. Once I got out here to the suburbs, I began to see a mix of both signs that supported Biden and signs that supported Trump. Out here, it was all the Trump train, baby. Another way to look at it, Biden won 85% of counties with a Whole Foods and just 32% of counties with a Cracker Barrel. And it hasn't always been this way. I mean, even as recently as 2000, the presidential election results by county looked like this. Because of this, politically, urban and rural communities seem radically different culturally. Often, this leads to tension between the two, especially since often there are blue metros within red states, and these Democrat-led metros pass laws the Republican-led state legislatures disagree with. Uh, so why is this? Why is almost everybody here voting for Democrats and almost everybody here voting for Republicans? Well, according to my research, there are five main reasons. Number one, fear of change. According to the research, folks who live in rural areas are more resistant to change. They favor, quote, traditional values, which can be a meaningless phrase, but really just means values passed down from previous generations. Meanwhile, in cities, there is anonymity. 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 That's a hard word to say. Anonymity. They can be anonymous. And that means people can get away with going against traditional values and try new things. This phenomenon is not new. Ever since big cities became a thing, folks who lived in rural areas favored traditional values more than folks who lived in urban areas. Number two, wealth inequality. Most of the new wealth that has been created in recent decades has been in urban areas. And when I say wealth, I mean a lot of it. The gap 
between the richest and poorest is arguably worse now in the United States than it ever has been. And where is almost all that wealth concentrated in? The cities. For this reason, rural residents have felt left behind, especially as more and more folks who were raised in rural areas moved to urban areas as adults to find better paying jobs. For those left behind in rural areas, they often blame the so-called, quote, elites, or a group of people who have most of the power. Where do these elites tend to live? The cities. And lately, the Republican Party has done a better job of convincing rural voters that the Democratic Party is made up of these elites, whether it's true or not. Number three, the Democratic Party has abandoned rural voters. Over the past few decades, Democrats have focused more on urban concerns, much more than rural concerns. In particular, they have focused on the struggles of minority groups. But there's not a lot of minority groups out here. Democrats tend to fight for immigrants and tend to want less strict policies for illegal immigrants. Well, guess what? Out here in rural America, they often view those illegal immigrants as competitors for jobs, and they often blame them for lower wages. In both the 2016 and 2020 presidential elections, counties that struggled with economic decline tended to vote Republican, while counties that had economic prosperity tended to vote Democrat. Yeah, I know this map shows population decline, but there's a strong correlation between population decline and economic decline. So the counties that are red on this map were much more likely to vote for Trump in both 2016 and 2020. And yep, those counties that struggled economically were rural counties. Counties. Number four, when it comes to economics, the Democratic Party is similar to the Republican Party. Both rural and urban areas have been screwed over economically for decades for various reasons, but the Democratic Party used to at least attempt to offer assistance to those in poverty. Since the Reagan Revolution of the 1980s and the rise of New Democrats in the 1990s, financial assistance to those in poverty has declined, while wages have remained stagnant. This is mostly since Democrats have compromised and worked with Republicans in shrinking welfare programs. Now, do welfare programs actually help reduce poverty? Eh, well, that's a topic for another video. But the point is, the Democratic Party used to be perceived as the party for those in poverty, whereas now, not so much. Heck, even the minimum wage hasn't gone up since 2009. Number five, the culture war. So since Republicans and Democrats mostly have agreed on economics, the culture war has taken its place. Social issues are often now just as important as economic issues to many American voters. Issues like abortion, gun control, police brutality, and LGBT plus rights are now at the forefront, and urban and rural residents often strongly disagree on these issues. Not only that, Republicans and Democrats have been successful at politicizing these social issues. The urban-rural political divide is not just seen in the United States. It's everywhere from France to Poland to Turkey to Thailand. The urban-rural political divide is so common in the 21st century that political scientists are now spending a lot of time studying it and worrying about it since it has arguably led to more polarization. To me, the urban-rural political divide is a symptom of governments increasingly becoming out of touch with ordinary citizens. Here in rural America, they often feel that the Democratic Party not only neglected them, but also is to blame for taking away what they once had. Unless that changes, they will continue to vote red out here for a very long time. And here in urban America, they often view rural voters as a stereotype as if everyone who lives in the country is a racist bigot. By the way, as someone who has both lived and worked in rural areas for part of my life, this is obviously not true at all. Perhaps the hope to escape this polarization can come from suburban areas, which seem to be the last places on Earth where people can at least attempt to compromise and be pragmatic. Here, two worlds often collide, and I think that's a good thing. Not that I'm a fan of suburbs.
even though I've spent much of my life living in them. But I digress. Are you going to the gym and not getting the results that you think you deserve? Well, consider testosterone. Maybe your testosterone levels are not high enough. Low testosterone can cause you to lose muscle mass and gain body fat. And sure, it's common among men who are older, but low testosterone can happen at any age. So what about my testosterone level? Well, let's get checked. This video is sponsored by Let's Get Checked. It's the world leader in at-home testing kits. And their male hormone tests let you discreetly test your testosterone levels at home. It comes in this discreet packaging and there's next day delivery. Once your sample gets to the lab, you can confidently check your results out on your online secure account within two to five days. So try it out yourself. Go to that website there, T-R-Y-L-G-C dot com slash Mr. Beat. Use code Mr. Beat to get 30% off of your test. But what do you think? Are there other explanations for the American rural urban political divide? Let me know in the comments below. Also, I'm conducting a poll for my viewers that I've linked in the description and pinned comments. It has two questions. Do you live in an urban area, suburban area, or rural area? And do you lean to the left or right politically? I'll share the results later on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching. Out here, it was all Trump train, baby. It's hot out here. I think I'm, I think I'm done.